rules our world. Master, we come before you. Just as humble as we know how. First, we'd like to tell you, thank you, Master. Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace. Thank you for being God all the nation. Thank you for what you've done for us, Master, for what you're doing, what you will continue to do in our lives. Let your will be done, Master. We said yes to your will and your way. We said yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yes. Yes to what you've done, what you're doing, and what you will continue to do in our lives. Master, some have come. Some have come this way, Master, this morning, uh, standing in need of a blessing. Man, we know you're able to deliver, Master. Because you're God and you're God alone, Master. And Master, we're asking, Master, that you show up and show yourself to be God as only you can, Master. So we're trusting in you, Master. And Master, we ask that you just continue, continue. And we love you, Master. We need you. And we can't get along without you. And Master, we pray that something is said or done this morning, Master. Master, we ask that you bless the pastor, first lady, Master, and the one who's bringing the word on today. Something is said or done today. And someone come running down the aisle wondering, what must I do to be saved? We'll give your name praise, honor, and glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. And everyone that agreed said amen. 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 amen and amen. And thank you, God. And this morning, my scripture reading will come from 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. And it says, uh, the following, it says, If my people who are called by my name <laughs> will humble themselves, and pray yeah. and seek my face yeah. Yeah. and turn yeah. from their wicked way. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, and then yeah. and only then yeah. will I hear from heaven yeah. and forgive their sins yeah. and will heal their land. Yeah. And how many this morning can agree with me that the land is sick yeah. and in need of healing? Yeah. <laughs> and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's magnify the God of our salvation. Come on, let's give Him praise. Hallelujah, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on, this God has done anything for anybody in this house. You ought to give Him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you ought to stand on your feet and give God some praise. Amen. I don't know about y'all. Amen. But when I walk up this morning, hallelujah, amen, I woke up this morning, amen, I saw mother that I was in my right mind, amen, I didn't get up and put my shoe on my head, amen, amen, I was in my right mind, amen, I gotta give God some praise, amen, because God has been good to me, I don't know about you, amen, amen, but the devil, amen, amen, meant for evil, God turn it around for the good, amen, come on, how many know, amen, there's power in the name of Jesus. Millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Millions did not make it, but you were one of the ones who did. Millions did not make it, but we were one of the ones who did. God gave us another chance to get it right, and because he did, what is your response? Chief Apostle. Greater New Bible Church of God in Christ 
2022 theme, expect God to renew in 2022. Yeah. Our church motto, a church where love flows because God controls. Church slogan, a church where God is really, really real. Brand new Bible Way Church of God in Christ, Elder Dennis J. Rogers, pastor, worship schedule. Virtual Sunday school is held each and every Sunday morning through conference call at 9 a.m. Central Time. The phone number of access is 978-990-5000. The code is 602-784-POUND. Sunday morning worship, we are worshiping God in person. Amen. In spirit and in truth, at 11 a.m. Central Time. Wednesday night, there is a prayer call. All oh, that men would pray at 8 p.m. Central Time. The phone number access is 978-990-5000. The code is 602-784-POUND. Friday, one hour of power in prayer in person at 11 a.m. Central Time. Join the Great New Bible Way, that fervent group of praying women we know them as the Mother's Board for virtual prayer. Tuesdays at 6 a.m. Central Time. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. The coordinator is our own mother, Jesse May M. Danton. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Join the Great New Bible Way Church of God in Christ virtually for any of these worship opportunities by means of social media or via Facebook, Great New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. Instagram, Greater New Bible Way Coaching, or YouTube, Quick Church Service. Services, join us one, join us all. To God be the glory. Acknowledgement of visitors and special guests. Our VIPs is what we're going to start calling you at Greater New Bible Way. If you are our VIP or special guest, would you please stand all over the room? We want to acknowledge you. You are our VIPs, our special guests. Acknowledgement of birthdays in the month of July. If your birthday is in the month of July, the seventh month of the year, will you please stand? <laughs> July birthdays, praise the Lord. We celebrate you, you, and especially you. Amen. If your wedding anniversary is in the month of July, will you please stand at this time? All right. All right. God bless you. Amen. Happy anniversary. Amen. The return. The return. The return. The return. The return. It's revival time in Greater New Bible Way. And revival is defined as the awakening or quickening of God's people to their purpose and their call. Amen. Their true nature. The return revival. Thing, a call to return. Coming from Zechariah 1. 1 through 4. Happening 6.30 p.m. nightly. Where? Right here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. Beginning in the month of August, the eighth month of the year, we know that eight is new beginnings. It's a new beginning in Greater New Bible Way. On August the 4th, the special guest evangelist would be none other than an anointed man of God, Helen from Marin, Arkansas, in the person of Pastor James Sanders. August the 11th, amen, we're going to Jonesboro, Arkansas, that a son of Arkansas, amen, the, none other than our own Pastor James Yarrow. And then on August the 18th, we're going over to our sister jurisdiction, the first jurisdiction of Arkansas, and we're calling on none other than that anointed young man of God, amen, Pastor Cedric Smith. August 18th, are we excited to play the new Bible way? Amen. Pastor Dennis J. Rogers Sr., the revival services will be held in person as well as on Facebook Live. It's time to return. It's time to return. Sunday school is marching on in Greater New Bible Way. Sunday school.
school will return in person on Sunday, August the 7th, beginning with prayer at 9 a.m., Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., following our Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. Amen. Let's praise God for Sunday school. Under the leadership or direction of our own Thaddeus B. Rogers and our own Deacon Lee Allen. Let's say amen for them. Back to school giveaway. Back to school giveaway. Happening right here at Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ, August 6, 2022, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Coordinated by the Ministry of Health and Social Concerns, GMB Ministers Wives, and Delta Dental of Arkansas. <laughs> Pastor Dennis A. Rogers Sr. What are they going to have? What's going on? Free school supplies, free dental supplies, free health snack bags, drive-by service, and walk-by service. Amen? Social distance and masks will be required. Amen. Amen. It's time to return. Return, return, return. The GMB Choir will be rehearsing every first and second Wednesday of each month. We will then sing every first and second Sundays. Call it the GMB Choir. Please make plans to attend. Rehearsal times will be at 6.30 p.m. Any questions or concerns, please contact Sister Chandra Perry with further for further details. She is thanking you in advance. <laughs> Arkansas Second Jurisdiction, Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, under the leadership of our shepherd, the Bishop Frank J. Anderson, Jr. Prelate, announces the 72nd Holy Convocation. <laughs> July 27th through the 31st, where? Hot Springs Convention Center in the spa city of Hot Springs, Arkansas. The theme is, Will the Seed Survive? Convention highlights. Wednesday night, the convocation opens up with none other than the Southern Region Youth President for the Church of God in Christ, known as the powerful anointed man of God who walks in humility, Pastor Larry Lewis. And it says that he brings a Greyhound bus everywhere he goes. My God. Thursday, July the 28th, 12 noon, the women are in worship and will be leading the service. Our supervisor is none other than Supervisor Jeanette A. Watkins, and she will be speaking. Worship on that Thursday night begins at 7.30 p.m., a night to honor Arkansas's father. Arkansas's father, none other than our own, the Bishop D. L. Lindsay Singer. Amen. The speaker will be Bishop Robert G. Rudolph. Friday night, Helen from Memphis, Tennessee, the Jerusalem of the Church of God in Christ, will be our international AIM chairman, pastor of the Citadel Church of God in Christ, Bishop Linwood Elijah Dillard. Saturday, the Brotherhood will have a picnic from 11 to 4, the jurisdictional concert <laughs> will be at uh, Saturday night at 7 p.m. Get your tickets for that. And then on Sunday is the official worship day. Our Lord's Day worship beginning with Sunday school at 9 a.m. And the annual dress by our own prelate bishop, Frank J. Anderson, Jr. Let's say amen. amen. All right, ladies, your colors for the convocation are as follows. Wednesday day service, come as you are. Wednesday evening service, come as you are. Thursday service, day service on Thursday, shades of green with silver and white. Mothers calling for unity and solidarity. Thursday evening service, come as you are. Friday morning will be the service of ordination and Holy Communion. Evangelist missionaries, you will be in your full white habit attire. Deaconess missionaries in your full white overlay attire. All laity women in full white. Friday evening service, come as you are. Saturday, jurisdictional t-shirts. Saturday night, the musical, come as you are. And Saturday, Sunday morning, official day, we are wearing black. Amen, amen. And the Women's Department of the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction Prayer Journey continues. We stand united in prayer, faith, and fasting. These uh, information is posted on our boards. 
Amen. Our uh, Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Bishop Frank J. Anderson Jr. Fifth Annual Picnic will take place again on Saturday, July the 30th. There's, the donation is $20 for adults, which includes your T-shirt and lunch, and $12 for youth. Second Jurisdiction of Arkansas Music Department presents Bring the Choir Back. Bring the Choir Back. Saturday night concert, July 30th, Hot Springs Convention Center at 7 p.m. The Pastor Donald D. Bond is the music president, and Bishop Anderson is our prelate. They're going to have the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction Choir, Patrick Bean, and Bonafide Worshippers. Mark Queen Middleton and the Miracle Chorale and much, much more. Let's say amen. amen. And our last and final announcement, it says, Fly First, Love Yourself, the release women's conference occurring on August the 6th, amen, at 1230 p.m., 8925 Gardner Road in Little Rock, Arkansas. Come and join us and release everything you have been holding on to as a strong woman. Come and join us in lots of space and in comfort. Keynote speaker, Evangelist June D. Joseph. These are your morning directors and announcements. Pray my strength to the Lord. All right. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody it's time for the word now. Word. It's time for preaching now. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. I need a word this morning. What about you? I need a word from the Lord this morning. A word that will save, a word that will heal, and a word that will deliver and set the captive free. If you're here this morning, you need to be, you want to be saved, you want to give your life to Christ, you're in the right place today. If you need healing today, you're in the right place. Whatever you have need of, God's got it on today. God's got it today. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. At this time, after our choir would have sung their song, amen, the next voice that will be coming to this sacred podium will be none other than our assisting pastor. Amen. An evangelist from his heart. None other than the elder, David White. Will you put your hands together one more time and receive, amen, our praise for you. While you're standing on your feet, let's go before the throne room of heaven on today. Heavenly Father, we honor your presence in this house. We thank you for all that you've done and what you're getting ready to do. We thank you for the people of God that has come today, those that are viewing live stream, God, that are searching from something, God, they're searching, yes, yes, God, your love, they're searching the depth of your salvation. Yes. Father, we pray today that the healing hand of Christ would touch those, God, that are reaching out to you. I pray, Lord God, that no man leave disappointed that everyone that have come today, that have tuned in, receive that of the Lord. Father, we bind the hand of the enemy. We rebuke the devil. We cast out the spirit of darkness from the mind of the people. And Father, we speak life over them, that the light of the Holy Spirit will come in their hearts. Even now, O oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. We bless this house today. We honor and we bless the men of God of this house that you continue to lead in God in the way that you would have him to go. We pray, oh God, that your peace be with those God that seek. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. Come on and give them a hand of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. How many of you are happy about the Lord today? How many of you are excited about Christ? Amen. We certainly are thankful today, and certainly the house has been addressed, but I would just like to share honor today with our leader, our pastor, Pastor Rogers, 
Amen. Come on, give God a good hand praise for him. To share his pulpit with me today. Thank God for you. And to Lady Rogers, God bless you. And to Mother Rogers, God bless you. And we're so thankful today. And I pray that God continue to do something in the lives of his people. How many of you are seeking God for something today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to know that God is moving in a mighty way. The eyes of the Lord is going to and fro. And I tell you, he's seeing, he's searching, and he's looking. Amen. The Bible said, other sheep that I have that are not of this fold, them too I also must bring in. God is bringing in, and his voice is speaking profoundly in this generation and in this, and in this time. Amen. I, you know, I don't tell people anymore of that is that uh, that I'm speaking for God. I tell people today, Missionary uh, Rogers, that I am the voice of God because right. we are called to speak for Him. Yeah. Amen. And the only voice, the only God voice they're going to hear is the true message of Christ Jesus. Yes, it ain't going to be anything about me or no other man, but it's all about. God, amen, and God moves through man. Does he not? God moves through man. Amen. Only one time in the Bible did God take his hand and write on the wall. Every other written epistle, the written law that was done, he did it through man. So God spoke through Elijah and told him this, told, and, he, and told Elijah Amen. To go to the widow woman's house. Did he not? God spoke his word. And so anytime that God speak, he uses man. And so the man that God would use in this day is not a selfish man. It's not a man of pride. It's not a man that trying to benefit off of God's word. But it's a man that a man of integrity, a man that is humble, a man that walks in truth. A man that will allow God's spirit to operate through him. A man that will hear God's voice. And a man that will speak what God speak unto him. Those are the men and women that God is calling for in this final day. How many know that we are in the final day? We are in the last day. God is moving across the nation. God is moving in America. I don't care how devastated evil seem to be. God is moving in this country. God's hand is moving and he's showing man that I am God and that I am in control. Nothing happened without my knowledge that everything that takes place, I have an account of your doing. Somebody say amen. There's nothing that is said today that God haven't heard. There's nothing that is moving on the earth that God doesn't see anything that happened today God hears it, he sees it and God permit it and he allow it to be because that's what his will is for that purpose. I wish I had somebody here that know what I'm talking about that would give God a great big hallelujah I believe the church is in for a great awakening let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1 is where I would draw my lesson from. And certainly I pray that each and every one of you stay uh, throughout the duration of this service today. We certainly have a man of God that is worthy of the honor that we give him. And today we're going to take time at the end of the service and we're going to do that because that's the kind of love we have for him. Amen? And I pray that you stay with me today. Because somebody going to walk out of here differently than you came in here. Somebody going to walk out of here with a different life. I believe. Look at somebody and say, I believe God. Amen. Acts chapter 1, we'll begin at the seventh verse. And he said to them, it is not for you to know time or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria 
and to the end of the earth. Now, if you would go with me also to the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and we'll begin reading at the first verse. Ecclesiastes is right out of Proverbs. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Amen. God bless you. I want to speak to you on today from this thought, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. And if I had to ask another question, I would ask, what time is it? That saying is the most saying in the world. Everybody, most everybody wears a watch. And everybody wants to know what time it is. The most asked question in the world today is what time is it? Time is essential and it is important. God has an appointed time for you to be born and for you to die. Every one of us is on a time scale that none of us can control. We can set, up, set in an appointment, but there's no 100% guarantee you're going to make it. Isn't that right? Yeah. God knows the right time for you. The acceptable time is the time that he ordained from the foundation of the earth. Every one of us are uniquely designed and every one of us was made for a specific purpose. Every one of us God knows by name. He knows the numbers of hairs on your head. Those of us that still have hairs. Somebody say amen. amen. But he knows everything about you. God knows that there's a designated time for you to step into your destiny. And there's also a time for you to wait before you move into your destiny. We have wasted a lot of time trying to figure God out. And trying to figure out what God is doing when we have all we have to do is go to his word and his word declares the glory of God. Yeah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Human have little or no control over time and changes. The eternal God sovereignly determines all life activities. Isn't that you need to know that the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that made the sun, moon, and the stars, the God that has control over the wind that blows on the earth, the God that causes the lightning to flash and the thunder to roar, that God that I'm talking about took the dust from the earth and formed man and breathed into man and man became a living being. That God that took the stepped out in the space of nothing caused the water to separate from the earth and called the earth the dry places, the earth and the waters and the sea, called it the ocean and the sea. Did he not do it? That God is whom I'm speaking of today that holds your future in his hand. I don't care how smart we think we are, how intelligent we are. It doesn't matter how much we have accomplished on this earth. God still holds the time in your life today. Somebody say amen. There's only one God. 
There's no three gods. There's one God. He's in control of it all. He knows it all. God moves at his time. In our time, it's not the same time as God. The good thing that God has no time. He moves when he will. He does as he commands. And God can do the most things that man cannot do. God stands up on nothing and he creates and speak. And things happen under the authority of God's word. I wish I had somebody to say amen here today. The doctor can tell you or give you an estimate of time through their experience when a disease overtakes the body. He can tell you, you according to, the, to the, the progressiveness of that illness in your body, you may live six months. And you know the, 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 the craziest thing about that is we believe immediately what the doctor says. But don't believe the word of God. We believe because the doctor comes in there and he tells us about our life and one day he got to die. So how in the world can somebody dying like I'm dying telling me my life is going to be over in six months? It may be, but not because he said it, because it's my appointed time to go home to be with the Lord. Somebody shout Amen. What time is it? Well, it's praying time. It's time for us to understand and to know. Oh, look, God. It's time for us to understand and to know that what God has permitted and allowed in your life, that he will finish what he started. It doesn't matter how great the situation has magnified itself. Only God can turn things around and cause that thing that has hindered you to break away from the power of that dark thing in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. If we can only hold out until tomorrow, a brighter, a brighter day will come your way. Do y'all believe what I'm saying here today? There is an appointed time. The Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes, amen, hold up now, that, uh, that there is a time and a season for all things. That all things include everything that moves, everything that happens, everything that, amen, that is created, everything, every form. There's a time and a season for that thing to happen. There's a time, and I know we don't like it, but there's a time for war. And there's a time for peace. We don't like it when God takes our loved one, but there's a time for death. And there's a time for children, our, our children to be born into this world. There is a time for us to go through a period in our life when we are battling the enemies and the forces of this world. But there's a time when you walk in triumph and that you walk in total victory because that is the time in the season that God has ordained for you. That's why you got to get it when you can. That's why you got to move when you need to move. That's why you got to reach out when there's a hand reaching down to you. You got to reach up to that reaching down hand and allow the power of God to refresh your spirit. Tell somebody, I need a refreshing in today. Some of us are uh, waiting and waiting. Now I hear people say, Yo, you just got to wait on God. You have to understand the period of waiting in your life. It's not eternal. The only thing that we have eternal to wait on is the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's eternal. Amen? But waiting on God doesn't mean we sit there and don't move. Waiting on God means that I'm going to sit this thing right here until God completes it. But meantime, I got to move into another area of my life where God is allowing me to move. Isn't that right? 
Amen. I cannot sit there and wait, amen, for somebody to bring me something. I got to swim out to the ocean and get what God has for me. When God allow his spirit to move, amen, upon your life, that's the time you need to move while the spirit is moving into your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. We will honor God's presence as we began to move into the spirit realm, what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen? Something that the enemy don't want us to, amen, receive from God. You know, we are a people of habit. Are we not? We are a people of habit. We do things a lot out of habit. A lot, the way we worship today, it was formed from our young life. Amen? Amen? We worship because our parents passed it down to us. Their parents passed it down to them. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we know things sometimes simply because what our parents have imparted in us. Yes. What they taught us. This is the reason why it's so important for, for mom and dad to teach your children the way of God. Now, I'm going to tell you, you don't never have to teach your children how to lie. They go automatically know how. You don't have to teach them that. Not because they're liars, because we're by our nature is sinful. So sin, sinful nature, going to automatically do the thing that is sinful because that's what we that's how we operate. But we do have to teach them how to live a right way. See, when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, God gave Adam all authority in that garden. God told him, look, I've given you everything. Every, you can eat from any tree except for that one. Isn't that right? You can eat from that tree except for that one tree. He said, don't do it. The day that you do it, you will die. And here come the evil one. And we got to remember Satan was here before. <laughs> Amen. He was cast down from heaven. Jesus even said, I beheld Satan as lightning. Amen. Satan tried to rise up above God. Amen. And take it, no, he tried to overrule God. But the angels in heaven dismissed him. So he fell in and was cast into the bias. Amen. So he was there on the earth before Adam lived was there. Amen. And so Satan came as a slick serpent and he presented himself to Eve. It's not because she was just because she was the weaker vessel. He attacks anybody. But he did get to her. And you know the weakest thing about it is not what Eve did, it's what I Adam did after. Eve did. Sometimes us men think that we're strong, but we may not be as wise <laughs> because he followed suit. Did he not do it? Satan told us, that the Lord know that you're not going to die. He know that the day you eat of that fruit, you're going to become as he. You're going to be able to discern good from evil. Can you imagine in your mind and in your heart if they would have never failed God, where our, our life would be today. Can you imagine that? Because through the disobedience of Adam and Eve, sickness came. Diseases came. Why? Because sin came. And the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. So, so Adam in the Garden of Eden was driven out of the presence of God because God could not associate himself with sin. But thank God today for the grace given unto you and I through Jesus Christ. Now Adam lost ground, but Jesus came back. Amen. The Bible, Jesus even, Jesus told the devil, Jesus told him, he said, look, I come to destroy the works of the devil, to restore man back in fellowship with God. Thank God today that his death was not in vain. He went to that cross, 
Amen. He died for the sins of this world. Every sin was placed upon him who knew no sin. I'm talking about a perfect man that there was no gout in his mouth. There was no tricks. There was no lies. He was a man without fault. He was a perfect and upright man of God. He was a, he was a son of God. Amen. He knew no sin. But God through Christ, amen, put the sins of the world upon Jesus. And Jesus one day died. And when he was buried in the ground, amen, when he was buried in the tomb, our sins went right there with him. Amen. But when he rose up that morning on that third day, that new life, that resurrected life, that life, my God, that gives you to be free from sin, that life rose up with you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. My God, that's why we can say no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper because Christ defeated the devil. He destroyed the works of the enemy. He made a way for you and I. He made made it possible for us to walk again hand to hand with the Lord. He made us to have fellowship with the Father once again. We're no longer sinful before the Father, but when Christ, when God sees us today, he sees the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, that resurrected power that's now operated in the life of the believers. Somebody ought to shout amen. Look at somebody today and say, neighbor, do you know what time it is? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's time to pray. It's time to come back home. It's time to seek God with your whole heart. It's time for us to lay down every weight and every sin. My God, that now be set us. It's time for us to take hold of the gospel plow. It's time for us to realize that my God is getting late in the evening and the sun is going down. It's time for us to realize that my God, I'm here today and I can be gone tomorrow. It's time to realize that, that God will move at his appointed time. Somebody shout amen. You got to realize what time it is. You don't have any time to wait. You have no time to waste. Every time you turn the television on, somebody is dying. The sister that was here yesterday, she's gone today. The brother that was here ushering today will be gone tomorrow. That's how urgent it is. Some of us think we got much time left. But you know, time is not based upon your age. Because the Bible said God looked on the backside of the desert when Moses was 80 years old and told Moses, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to send you there to Egypt. You're going to go there. You're going to face Pharaoh. You're going to tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. See, it's not by age. Somebody say yes. Because at the age of 12, Jesus sat down with the doctors and the lawyers. He amazed them. Somebody say yes. I don't know about y'all today, but God will use anybody that will allow them to use it. Somebody say yes. And I know sometimes in the church house, we don't believe in women preachers. But if the man sit down, God will raise up a woman. Somebody say yes. God is not going to let our tradition change the course of my God of his nature. Because God, he don't need no assistant in my God promoting him as God. He's God all by himself. He's God today. Whether you live or you die, he's still God. Somebody say yes, Lord. Come on, somebody and shout yes. Woo! Look at somebody today and say, neighbor, do you know what time it is? But I want to remind you of something today. You know, God, He will move in any direction that He that He pleased to move. Now I want to show you something in the book of Luke, chapter 9. I want to show you something today. This is the church is asleep today. 
We're sleeping at a bad time. Somebody say amen. I said we're sleeping at a bad time. Luke chapter uh, nine, chapter eight, and verse thirty-two, I believe. Yes, Luke chapter nine, verse thirty-two. But Peter and those that were with those that were with him was heavy with sleep, and when they were full awake, they saw him. They saw his glory, and those two men stood with him. Now this is talking about on the mountain of transfiguration. Can you see that? Peter, John, James and John was the three that was chosen to go with Christ to that mountain. And when they got there, they were asleep while Jesus was praying. Now this is uh, very typical in the church today because we, uh, we're asking God for revival but we're sleeping. We're asking the Lord for a visitation, but we're sleeping. We can come to any concert, but we won't come to a prayer meeting. That's a sign that we're sleeping. Isn't that right? We'll come to an eat out, but we won't come to a prayer meeting. We'll go to a banquet, but no prayer meeting. Every time there's prayer, we got to wash clothes. We got to take our children somewhere. We got a doctor's appointment. We got everything. Every prayer meeting, we got excuses. Isn't that right? But the Bible said that my people, with the call by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Listen to the word pray and seek my face. See, if we never seek God, we'll never know God. If we never communicate with Him, we'll never know His voice. The Bible said, my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. We're wondering, God, what's going on in the world today? Why are there so much false teaching? And then you got people that say, I don't know who's telling the truth. The reason why we don't know is because we lost contact with the master who has the plan in his hand. Anytime you fail to my God to my God to increase your relationship with God. That's a good sign that you may be lost. Yeah. Have you ever went on a long trip and used the navigation system? You didn't need nobody. You wanted to use the navigation system, but the navigation system led you around your destination or led you to a dead end. I never forget. I went to John Bell, Arkansas. And I was driving, this was when I was about 21 years old. I was driving a lot of church folk to Jonesboro College, U, what, UCA? Up there, and I, I couldn't find it. But I pulled over to a gas station. You know, we didn't have all that we have now. I pulled over to a gas station. And when I walked in there, I could feel the tension right there. I knew I was in the wrong place. <laughs> I knew I was in the wrong place. And I asked them, I, little to my knowledge, I was where I was. The college was only two blocks over to my right. But it was dark and I couldn't see nothing. And you know, and I walked in and the man said, just go on that road there and go all the way down. He said, it's going to seem like you're going to a dead end. He said, but keep on going. And I we was riding out. I said, I was thinking, I said, oh, wait a minute. And I said, now we're going, we're off the paved road. We're on the gravel road. And I said, now how in the world, I went to university be in the woods. I said, this can't be right. And so I stopped, and as soon as I turned around, there was a river right there in front of us. The devil didn't want us to get there. So when I came, I, I turned around and came back, and came back to that gas station, and I looked up to the left, I said, there's the college right there. But they led us the wrong direction. Well, you know, back in the day, in the early 70s, I believe, Jim Jones led somebody in that same direction. That's why, amen, you can't just have a shout in your feet. You cannot have just a clapping in your hand. You can't have just a tongue talk in your mouth. You got to know the man that called you. 
You got to know the Lord and know his voice when he speaks to you. Because everybody that's preaching is not preaching Jesus Christ. Everybody that calls a prayer meeting is not calling, amen, to get in touch with God. But I want to let you know tonight that God is calling for people that will say, Lord, I surrender my all unto you. Oh, Lord, I'm giving my all that I may know Jesus Christ, that I may walk in his direction, that I may walk in his spirit, that I can operate under the anointing of God, that I can hear God when he speaks to me. I want to know his voice. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Do y'all know what I'm saying today? Don't waste your time. We spend so much time, and I'm coming to a close. We spend so much time, everybody standing on your feet at this moment. There's only one God, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The Holy Spirit, he speaks expressly to the body of Christ. There's no one in this room today that cannot have connection with God. God's going to set you free today. God is going to set you free right now. There's too much power surrounding you right now for anything else but freedom. You hear me today? I speak to that thing. I take authority over that demonic force that have had you bound, that have hindered you. God is going to give your sight back now. I'm not just talking about a spiritual sight, but I'm talking about a natural power on the shining light. The power of God. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, God. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I believe that you can do anything. But fail me. Say the Lord set me free of every demonic force that have had me bound, that have hindered me in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life now. Say, I need you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my life right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your head up. You can hold your head up and know that God is with you. You 
have nothing to be ashamed of. God is with you, daughter. You hear what I'm saying? And you're surrounded by some people that love you, that will show you even greater. Hallelujah. But it's up to you. You got to continue to come and let God do a complete thing with inside of you. Now listen, you can't go back to that same atmosphere. You hear what I'm saying? If you follow these instructions, God is going to continue to do. But if you go back in that same area where you were, you can fall right back. But today, you have been set free. Whom the Son set free is truly free indeed. God has turned your life around. God has turned your life around, daughter. We love you here. And we want to show you something. Hallelujah. We want to show you what real love is all about. What he's told you was love was not real love. But over on this side is real love. God has greater for you. Do you believe that on today? We're going to get you those materials that you have need of. That you have need of so that you can grow in the Lord. We're not going to allow you to leave here without getting you exactly what you have need of in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise for her right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to the need. Amen. Let's take care of those needs that she has before she leaves here. Come on, tell her thank you one more time, sir. God bless you today. Brother Joy. Amen. He's been a member here. Amen. For a long time. But he decided today he's renewing his membership. Is that right, Brother Joy? God bless you today, Brother Joy. I'm so happy because I know the work that God has placed down inside of you. Amen. We need you. The brotherhood needs you. Deacon Jackson needs you. Come on, Deacon. Come on down here, Deacon Jackson. Amen. We need you to come on in. Amen. As you have done before, amen, make yourself available to God. When you make yourself available to God, all those other things that you're trying to get straight now, it's already done. It's already done. It's a done deal. Amen. We're going to pray for you, amen, and we're going to receive you back, amen, into the fold of God, amen, and we thank God for Brother Joy. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this servant, God. Oh, God, this man, oh, God, who loves you with all of his heart, God. I pray now, God, that you would give him strength, that you would give him courage, God, to stand in these tests of times, oh God, in which we're all dealing with God. Remove, oh God, every selfish will out of the way, God, so that he may see you, oh God, so that you will be pleased, oh God, with his light, God. Everywhere he go, everything he do, oh God, let his light shine, oh God, so that other men will know that he belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Welcome home, Brother George. Welcome home today. Amen. God bless you. We love you today. Amen. To God be the... Come on, thank you. Praise the Lord, Saints. Praise the Lord once more and again. Truly, this is an awesome day on today to celebrate our pastor, the shepherd of this house, and our first lady, Dora Rogers. And we will now... Um, at this time, give you the presentations to bring forward for our pastor, first lady, to take to the Holy Convocation on this week. And before we uh, do our presentations, we will have Sister Juanita Quick to come and do the tribute to our pastor at this time. Praise the Lord, saints. It is an honor and a privilege to come before you on this Good Shepherd Sunday to express our gratitude to our great pastor 
Elder Dennis Jerome Rogers, Sr. <laughs> Jeremiah, the third chapter, in the 15th verse, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. An author by the name of John C. Maxwell wrote, A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. I'm going to repeat that. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Did I not just describe our pastor? We all know that Pastor Dennis works hard and shows his dedication to the church by being on call for us 24-7. He never seems to get weary helping others along God's way. From the children department to the young adults flock of sheep, you are considered energetic, healthy, good sense of humor, and sometimes dry your eyes. But that's okay because Jesus will. From the senior flock of sheep, you are considered a great shepherd because you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength. You teach us sound doctrine, a man of faith. You are loving and compassionate, honest and compatible, accountable, loyal, respectful, humble, meek, and you have integrity. That's just the name of few. And oh yes, you have swag. <laughs> Pastor, the word swag is a slang word. And it means stylish, confident, cool, looking great. And that's the name, just a few. We acknowledge all the pastor's traits and sacrifices. But we also acknowledge the pastor's wife. First Lady Dora and Robert. As Pastor Dennis gives his all to support the church, First Lady Dora gives her all to support her husband. We thank you, First Lady, for your ministry, your guidance, and your care. God's greatest blessings for your life is our most humble prayer. We, the GMB Church family, sincerely thank you for all you do, and we lift you up in prayer. Pastor Dennis, you are a servant of God who provides pastoral care to all of us here at GMB. Pastor, you communicate what we need to have a true relationship with the Lord. You keep us motivated and give us reasons to fight a good fight. You teach us from the Bible, words of love, and so much more. Your dedication to God's word is something we are grateful for. You show us Christ is the answer and that he'll strengthen us each day. May God continue to bless and keep you is our prayer. Hold on, Pastor, for the best is yet to come. Would everyone please stand? Show your love to the shepherd of this house, the greater new Bible way, Church of God in Christ, Pastor Dennis J. Rogers.
Oh, you want to stop? Okay, come on. Bye, bye. I'm passing, you know, the mother's board. Always have your back. We worked hard, but we didn't quite do what we wanted to do. If we had a million dollars, we would give it to you. But this is just a little song that says we love you, and we... Amen to our pastor and first lady. We love you from the music department. shepherd, but let's give our pastor a hand for being a great shepherd. You know, in Sunday school this morning, and this is from Sunday school, I made a statement that, you know, above the brother and, you know, that regular relationship, that should be a respect both ways between, I was alluding to this, about your God walk, right? About your, your faith walk, right? Amen. So above all of that, I appreciate your godly life. For a church where hey. love flows because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. 